Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. Well, on to a CNBC TV 18 exclusive then. Sonia caught up with uh, the president of the farm equipment sector at M&M and he remains optimistic on the overall growth for the industry and plans to grow the market share of the company from 43% to 50%. Listen in. We have $100 billion of non-tractor global business opportunity. Mm -hmm. So really the driver to our strategy is when there is such a big upside available, we have to think beyond being just a domestic tractor player. Mm -hmm. uh, because we have so much headroom for growth. Mm -hmm. We find that in many parts of the world, our products are perfectly suitable. Mm -hmm. Because the climatic conditions or the soil conditions are very similar to what we have here in India. Mm. So really we have an opportunity to leverage that and that's the driver of our global strategy. So harvesters of course is expensive but there are, there's a lot of farm equipment and tractor implement which are not so expensive. If you look at India right now, uh, about 20, less than 20% of the total business is from non-tractors. Yeah. If you look at it global, it's almost reversed. So just uh, 30 odd percent is tractors, the rest is mechanization or other uh, farm machinery. Mm -hmm. So over a period of time, we think India is going to keep adding newer uh, mechanization solutions going beyond tractors. Mm -hmm. We believe it's our role as a leader to enable that to happen. We think that we have all the right parameters to enable growth in the market share. One key new strategy which we've uh, spoken about recently is the three brand strategy, which is the introduction of our third brand. So we have a Mahindra brand, we have a Swaraj brand, mm. and we're now using our joint venture we have with Gujarat government, mm. uh, which was earlier called Mahindra Gujarat Tractor. Mm. Now renamed Gromax. Mm. We're launching, we've launched last year a third brand called Trackstar. Yeah, Trackstar. And that's going to be, uh, you know, taking on the price sensitive uh, consumer opportunity. Alright, then sticking with the uh, auto space, the June sales for Bharat Forge, Tata Motors, JLR, US Business and Force Motors are out. Sonia is with us to run us through uh, those details. Hey Sonia, good morning. Hi Nigel, good morning. Well, you know, Bharat Forge, uh, the North America truck sales came out in market hours yesterday, but a lot of brokerages have written notes post that. Nomura has written that uh, the North America Class A truck sales were very strong in the month of June. In fact, it was a growth of 143% year on year, coming in at 42,200 units. And now this is the fourth month uh, in the last six months that the North America truck sales have been above that 40,000 unit figure so it's looking pretty good and as we know Bharat Forge gets about 12% of their revenues from the North America truck market they have a neutral on Bharat Forge with a target price of 736 uh, for Tata Motors I expect that stock to be under pressure because the US market has been slowing down the luxury auto market has been growing in either single digits or degrowing in fact the JLR US retail sales were up just 7% in the month of June there was a huge fall in Jaguar sales uh, it was down 20 odd percent and the e-pace retail ramp up remains quite slow but it's not just Jaguar Land Rover BMW has seen uh, just a 2% growth the growth for Audi was flat and Mercedes in fact fell 10% in the month of June so not looking good over there however However, back home, Force Motors did pretty well in terms of their numbers. So uh, in June, the total sales growth was around 8.5% year-on-year, but it was a 17% month-on-month growth that they saw coming in at 2,669 units. So I expect that stock to be in the green. Back to you. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks so much for that, Sonia. Well, shifting focus to the pharma space. Pharma major Biocon has received a EU Good Manufacturing Practice certific Certification for its sterile drug product manufacturing facility in Bangalore. Ekta, uh, how positive is this? Well, it is definitely a positive for Biocon because uh, besides the fact that they've received this approval, mm -hmm. what it means is that they are, you know, they, their regulatory track record is going on a positive 
uh, trajectories. So, for example, this particular facility was also inspected by the USFT in the month of May. They had received uh, seven observations, but despite that, they did get the approval for Peckfield Grastim, and separately, uh, they uh, did get the EIR or Establishment Inspection Report in the month of June. Now, talking about the European regulatory approval, they received six observations in the month of March, where there was a re-inspection which had taken place, and none of them were categorized as critical, uh, but now the European regulator is also okay with the facility and has given their go-ahead for manufacturing from that particular plant, and hence uh, that should be an approval uh, which should be seen positively also for the biosimilar business when it comes to the European market. So net-net, positive news for Biocon. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks so much for that, Ekta. Well, Titan as well will be in focus. Its quarter one FY19 update suggests that the jewellery sales growth was muted due to weak demand and on a high base. Manglam, uh, good morning. Overall, though, this is positive and the stock as well has corrected, what, 15-20% from the recent peak? Absolutely, Nigel. Currently, it's trading about 12% uh, lower from its recent peak. And the company did say that the jewellery growth in first quarter FY19 was muted on account of two reasons. One, there was weak demand and secondly, there was high base. Now, a large part of the street was uh, was factoring this in primarily because if you remember, Q1 FY18 was one quarter before GST and a lot of sales were pre-pawned there. So, the jewellery segment in Q1 FY18 grew at around 54% and then there was a one-off out there as well. So, on that base, uh, the, 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 the company said the demand was slightly muted. Other than that, uh, the one thing that we have to know is that Akshay Tritya sales were good. It was the adornment jewellery that did not do well. They have launched a couple of new schemes as well as new collections in the jewellery business as well. So they've added 10 Tanish stores in this quarter, which again is a positive, indicates the company's uh, uh, pro demand uh, pro projection going forward. They haven't changed the guidance as well as their watches business did well. A uh, uh, good quarter for both retail and e-commerce format. Now, the stock would have been under pressure had it not corrected, but then now, now it's down about 12% from its recent peak, trading at 37 times FY20 uh, expected earnings as against 42, 43, which was at the peak. So it could see some buying at lower levels today. Okay, well, future lifestyle will be the other stock in focus, uh, Mangla. Absolutely, Ekta. It's acquired about 30% stake in uh, uh, in Coob's fashion in an online foray. This uh, They paid about 140 crores for this acquisition. And after this, they will also get two seats on the boards, uh, board of Coob's. Remember, Future Lifestyle, as of March 2018, has around 75 crores of cash on its book, 710 crores of debt. So funding shouldn't be a problem given that debt to equity is still a comfortable 0.4 times. Uh, uh, this acquisition will give Future Lifestyle access to uh, uh, the online plat for fashion platform platform and this is a positive given uh, the current situation that is taking place in the retail industry uh, the online offline uh, uh, synergies is something that everyone is focusing on right from Amazon buying stake in shopper stop as well as Walmart and Flipkart Jeffries is uh, positive on this they believe that this is better for both Coves as well as future lifestyle fashion they maintain their buy rating with a target price of 540 remember Coves PLC is a stock which is traded on the London Stock Exchange it was up 32% in yesterday's trading session so we'll have to watch out for what happens to future lifestyle today but for them it is a positive because they get uh, an opportunity to sell more of their brands via this online channel and get more margins as well given 75 percent of Coob's customers are all female uh, Manglam, just a quick follow-up. This is the second foray into uh, e-commerce, right? For Absolutely, future, yeah. uh, they had bought Fab Furnish, I think, a couple of uh, yeah, months. But then or... they had to demerge the Fab Furnish yeah. business, given uh, you know uh, the slow nature of mm -hmm. online furniture. This is more fast-moving, and for future lifestyle, it is much better for them as well. All right, so future lifestyle as well as Coves, both of them uh, are going to be in focus. Well, I'll tell you what, Manglam, no, Ekta was telling us that she uses the website quite often. <laughs> it's always in focus in my house as well, Coves. So, Nigel, you know. Uh, Actually, so I, I was disappointed because Fab Furnish, I think, is not available online anymore. It's yeah, they've, they've, they've shut that business because of slow in, in moving off inventory out there. You don't buy furniture as often as you buy clothes, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, three, uh, Nigel, you, I, I take your point completely. I was going through some data on Coves itself. Uh, uh, you know, three out of four people who buy from Coves are women. So, yeah, I mean... Uh, I think three Mangla. out of four people found in a mall or in a shopping <laughs> zone are you women. Know, Manglam, you're looking so ready, you know. You have all your data points... No, this, is, this is purely fabulous, for Mangla, <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> this you is know. purely for retail research purpose. The most else, eligible right? bachelor on CNBC TV 18, Mangla, <laughs> we're all ready. Thanks so much for joining in and giving us those details. Well, we'll slip into a short break. When you come back, we'll go back to Mangalam because he'll be joining us to tell us how the derivatives market is shaping up. Well, let's talk about stocks then. A CNBC TV 18 story was confirmed. We are given to understand that the Sriram Group will settle the dues on NCDs 
through the alternator mechanism. Abhishek joins us with more details on that. Abhishek. Uh, good morning, Nigel. So what Shiram Transport had given in exchange uh, notice yesterday was that the promoter entity has enough resources to honor all the NCD payments of SVL uh, Limited. So therefore, there will be no impact on the financials of Shiram Transport Finance on account of the 870 crore uh, NCD guarantee that they have given for SVL Limited. Let's look at the trade uh, data volume. That suggests that there was a delivery volume of 21% yesterday that was 1.84 crore shares were traded yesterday out of which 21% was marked for delivery. This is on the higher side because generally we have seen 5 to 10% delivery volume for Shiram Transport. Even if you look at the FNO space, the open interest was at 55.7% indicating fresh shorts that were made yesterday as the stock was down 12%. Brokerages now, uh, DB maintains their buy call. However, they have cut the target price to 1700 from 1800 but ICSI Securities has upgraded the stock to buy from ad with a target price remaining the same at 1770 CIMB has also maintained an ad with a target price of 1750 so no worries across the brokerages after this clarification back to you okay all right Abhishek thanks very much for that well let's go across to Manisha now who joins in with an update of everything from the commodity and currency space Manisha morning Hi, morning, and thank you so much for that. Would want to talk about the metal space where you have seen further pressure come in. Uh, the, uh, the global markets are readying themselves for new tariffs from U.S. on China worth $34 billion worth of goods, uh, and that doesn't augur well for the metal space. We have seen a sell-off in the recent weeks, but it just seems to be getting worse right now. Copper and zinc prices are trading at an 11-month lows. You saw nickel and lead decline nearly a couple of percentage points, and they are trading at May lows as well. Uh, you have tin, which is trading at a December low. The steel and the iron ore prices also have started soft in the Asian markets right now. Uh, the only uh, metal that is trading in the positive is aluminum, and that is because China has released statements saying that they will uh, shut down some smelters uh, to ensure uh, environment control, and also uh, that would lead to some curb in output, and that is the reason you have seen some support come in. But otherwise, all the other metals have started the day in the red. The crude oil crisis in the meanwhile does continue to look at the supply concerns there. While, of course, you have one side, the U.S. president tweeting, telling OPEC to reduce prices now and to increase output substantially. But on the other side, there are a lot of supply concerns. To begin with, uh, Iran has said that it will disrupt shipment from neighboring countries if uh, the U.S. presses all countries to stop buying the Iran oil. So that threat coming in from Iran also adds premium to those prices. Okay, all right. Thanks so much uh, for that, uh, Manisha. I think we have uh, Manglam as well with us. Yes. Uh, Manglam, uh, tell us about the derivatives market now. Well, Nigel, you know, yesterday while the Nifty moved higher by about 70 points, the Nifty futures did not move higher by as much as uh, uh, that because the Nifty futures moved about 53, 54 points. And we saw that in the intraday indicator that we have, which is the Nifty futures premium, which fell from about 24 points to just about one and a half points. That's telling you that, yes, there was some selling pressure. Brings uh, uh, the concerns back to the, uh, back to the fore that uh, uh, was that up move primarily on account of a range or uh, is there more to go for our markets? The FIs, they sold about 550 crores. Even as the markets moved higher, they added four shots per long contract in index futures, despite being net short on index futures as well. But were the markets to move higher, the FIs did not take a chance there too. They bought about 883 crore worth long calls in index options. Close to 8,000 long calls were added, and that can, compares with about 2,500 long puts that they added. Watch out for the 10,700 mark. That seems to be a bit of a fulcrum as far as the open interest action is concerned. The 10,700 put continued to see some writing and some uh, open interest was shed on the 10,700 call as we captured that mark. Uh, the, the key index to watch out for, remember this is the Thursday, is the Nifty Bank options because it is that uh, the Nifty Bank options expiry. The maximum open interest is at the 26,200 put and the 26,500 call. So 100 points upwards from here and 200 points lower from here is the support. Some stocks in focus, granules and Bajaj Auto saw some fresh long build up. Abhishek spoke about uh, Shriram Transport Finance, that one saw a lot of short addition along with NBCC as well, which was down about 5% yesterday. Okay, all right, Manglam. Thanks very much for that. And on that note, we're going to wrap up this edition of Our Breakfast. Stay tuned. Bazaar Morning Call just after a short break.